while satellites can provide an excellent wide area view of the flood. Unfortunately, visible band satellites can't see through the cloud that's often present during flooding, and they also won't work at night. To cope with this, flood detection is now commonly performed by high-resolution synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, sensors. These sensors are able to penetrate cloud and to image at nighttime as well as during the day. A particularly important SAR satellite that has been launched recently is Sentinel-1. This gives an image with 10 meter pixel size only an hour or so after it is received at the ground station. And the image is also free to us. While our method compares an image taken during the flood with an image taken before the flood. In urban areas, as you can see in A, it searches for strong double scattering from SAR to ground to wall and back to SAR in the unflooded image for walls that are roughly parallel to the satellite direction of travel. If such double scatterers show strong returns in the flooded image compared to the unflooded image, they are likely to be flooded as the reflectance of water is much higher than that of asphalt. However, double scatterers giving returns that are similar in both images probably aren't flooded. Flooded double scatterers are paired with nearby unflooded ones and the associated ground heights from an accurate height map we have are averaged to estimate local flood levels. Then rural flooding adjacent to the urban areas, as in B, uh, will often have a low return in the flooded image compared to the unflooded because the water reflects the radiation away from the sensor. The flood levels found in the urban and rural areas are interpolated over the area to form a flood level surface. And areas of urban flooding are detected by comparing this surface to our accurate height map. I'll illustrate the method using the flood that occurred on, in the village of Fishlake on the River Don in the north of England in November 2019. Uh, the flooding, which you can see behind me, was caused by an extreme weather event due to a stalled area of low pressure. More than a thousand homes from the village and the surrounding area had to be evacuated. So in, in this slide, A shows the flooded SAR image of the 14th of November. B shows the unflooded SAR image. And C shows the flooding in the rural areas surrounding the village detected by the hazard system looking for low SAR returns in flooded areas. There was little flooding found in the urban area because SAR returns in the flooded image were high there. Then urban area, no, urban flooding was identified using double scattering between flooded roads and adjacent building walls. So this shows the double scattering points for the flooded SAR image superimposed on our accurate height map. The blue points are the flooded double scatterers, while the red points are the unflooded ones, and lighter gray equals higher. Then this shows the final result. A shows the height map of the fish lake area, with the area visible in the aerial photos masked out in black. B shows the correspondence between the flooded SAR image and the aerial photo flood extent in the urban area that is visible in the aerial photos, superimposed on the height map. So yellow is wet in the SAR and the aerial photos, red is wet in the SAR only. The flood detection rate was 100% with a false, rate, false alarm rate of 8%. So the method has worked well in this example, though the accuracy does fall off when you have denser housing. We'd like to test the method in developing countries rather than simply in the UK. Also, we'd like to make the method more automatic than it is now. I think um, we will try and use machine learning to try and um, identify the double scatterers, um, because that's the bit that's uh, not fully automatic at the moment.